Hi, friends. I'm Sting and Shaggy. <laughs> Yo, this is Shaggy. And this is Sting. And you're watching Friends 24. Yep, you are. What's up? It's the musical partnership no one was expecting. Dancehall fusion star Shaggy, a.k.a. Mr. Lover Lover, teaming up with Sting, the legendary former frontman of the police. Bonding over their mutual love of Jamaica and its Caribbean rhythms, the pair's new joint album, 44876, is a catchy collection of uplifting reggae jams. Sting and Shaggy, welcome to the show. Thank you. This uh, joint project came about after a mutual uh, business acquaintance got you together. Sting, you said it was a risk going to this, not knowing what the outcome would be. What convinced you both to, to go for it in the end? Well, any artistic venture is always a risk. There's always an element there. Otherwise, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be art. Um, but the risk was only a creative risk. Um, you know, we, we started to make a record just for the process of okay. the fun of, of making a record. But we, the end result was not really in question. It was just the, the process was so much fun that we f forgot we were making a record, really. But halfway through, we realized we had something that sounded almost like a record. And if we did another few weeks, it, it would be a record. So we gave ourselves a deadline. And um, six weeks later, lo and behold, we have something that uh, people are surprised by. They're surprised by the combination of the two of us. They're surprised by the music we pitches together. And for me, the most important element in music is surprise. This is my mantra. You have to surprise people. So you talk about this element of surprise. So what do you say to people then uh, who are baffled by this musical partnership? I would say listen to music. The minute you listen to music, you'll get it. It might seem odd, you know, at first glance, but it really isn't, you know I mean? If you listen to earlier police records, a lot of them had very strong reggae influences. Sting has always done these uh, hybrid type of music, of music that where, you know, you use different styles of music and, you know, just kind of experiment. And I never made reggae music in its, in its you know, uh, natural form or its um, pure, pure forms. It made sense, you know, and once we realized that our voices uh, complemented each other, it just, you know, kind of worked. And for just from the first single, you could hear how, how much it works well. Now, you're both veterans of the music business, but what did you learn from one another while, uh, while working together? Was there, was there anything unexpected that, that happened during patience. the process? <laughs> I learned patience with this man. So you're an impatient man, Shaggy? <laughs> no, I'm not an impatient man. I, but for him, you need patience. <laughs> you are known. Something inside me tell us I'm gonna make you my own. Yeah. You're rocking right in my zone. Now you are the queen of my life and the heir to my throne. Hey! Woo. Uh, you know what? His process is, is much different than mine. I learned a lot of things from being in, this, in, in studio with him and his process that I don't think I'll ever make records the same way again. It's a whole bunch of things that's happening, but it makes it exciting. And I never really paid that much attention uh, to, to just the instrumentation of, of, of the music, and now I, I really put a lot of effort into he, that. He's more spontaneous than I am. I'm more methodical, but I, I think there's, there are arguments for both. Uh, and on this album, I entered his world to a certain extent, and he entered mine, which, which gave us both an advantage. We were both slightly out of our comfort zones. Now, guys, uh, what was the songwriting and um, recording process like? Was it a case of Sting, you coming up with most of the melodies, and Shaggy, you contributing your parts, and everyone sort of sticking to what they know? Or was it more collaborative than that? It was more collaborative. It was like, it's like soup. You know, we throw, throw something in, into the pot, and then he throws something else in, and we mix it up, and then we, you know, we take some things out, and, you know. But there was no one method. Uh, occasionally, I would c come in with an almost finished song, and he would add something. He, what are you doing? My, you're signing? <laughs> <laughs> 
he would come in with a, a, a finished song and I'd add my bit to it. So there was no, no one method, but it was all fun. It sounds like. Very collaborative. And what was the most annoying habit the other person had? Was there a habit? I don't think we had habits. Yeah, we have the same habit. We both drink gin. <laughs> yeah. That's not annoying. <laughs> it's not very annoying. Yeah, we really get on. I mean, people are surprised, you know, yeah. that we get on. I mean, we're both, I suppose, alpha males, but neither of us have much to prove, you know, so we sort of just, you know, get along. Yeah. The album is called 44876, referring to the country codes, of course, uh, the UK and Jamaica. Uh, the first single is called Don't Make Me Wait. Now, other than true love, which you reference in that song, what don't you mind waiting for? Well, I don't mind waiting until Sting goes through all the key changes, <laughs> the tempo changes, <laughs> and, and the chord structure to come out to something that is incredibly brilliant. I think patience is a, is a virtue that uh, men need to learn, and uh, it's an important virtue. You spent time together in... Uh, Once you're married, you'll learn patience. Aha! Actually, uh, it's my, uh, our 11th uh, anniversary, oh, wedding anniversary congratulations. today. Congratulations. Thank you very much. 11 years. 11 years. Oh, wow, yes. you certainly know to keep them, huh? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Apparently, apparently, um, you spent time together in Jamaica earlier this year. Sting, you have a, a deep connection to the country. I spent a lot of time in Jamaica in the 80s, and um, I lived in the house of Ian Fleming, who wrote the James Bond books. He was dead by the time I got there, but I used to write, write at his desk, and uh, I wrote some very big songs there. I wrote Every Breath You Take at that desk. I always had a, felt a debt to Jamaica, you know, obviously reggae was a huge influence on my life. The music of Bob Marley uh, affected me greatly. And so um, Shaggy gave me the opportunity to go back there and, and say thank you. The island still has a wonderful magic to it. Uh, it's great to visit and, I, you know, hadn't been there in maybe 20 years. And so it was a, a lovely opportunity to see some friends and visit, visit the island again and remind myself how great it is. And this time you had Shaggy as a tour guide. Shaggy is the Pope of Jamaica, and of course, you know, everybody bows down to Shaggy. <laughs> I bet, I bet. And given the, uh, the Caribbean vibes, the album uh, really transports us to sunnier climes. Um, you've said we need some feel-good tunes at the moment. What do you mean by that? I think these are very um, dark times. And the political climate is, is uh, particularly troubling. And so music has a very important function to uh, put a smile on people's face, to uh, give them a, a sense that things can change for the better. Uh, so we, first and foremost, we are entertainers. We have to entertain people. But underneath that, there's a, there's a layer of, uh, of information. I think that we, we cover some pretty serious subjects within the, the songwriting, but we do it with not anger. We do it with uh, hope. hope. And I think that's an important uh, ingredient in this soup, that people have hope. I don't want you to think I'm rushing you. I know you like to take your time. I'm already sold on the idea of you and I. Just tell me where I need to sign. And what's next for, for both of you? A surprise. Yeah. And it's such a surprise that neither of us know what it is. Yeah. Right, OK. It's so well, much we'll... of a surprise, we're surprised. <laughs> we have to be surprised. <laughs> if we're not surprised, we're bored. Yeah. Well, we're on the edge of, edge of our seats waiting for the surprise. And Shaggy, I have yeah. to ask, was it you? That wasn't me. That's my story, and, and I'm sticking to it. It wasn't me. I even had her in the shower. It wasn't me. She even told me on camera. It wasn't me. I think it was Fair him. Enough. It was him. <laughs> you're such a sellout. Uh, <laughs> Sting, uh, Sting, you're uh, you're spilling the tea. <laughs> <laughs> Spill the tea. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Thank, thank you very you. much. It was so lovely to Pleasure, both pleasure of is you. mine.
Yeah. <laughs>